Although teenagers are 80% less likely to smoke than they were in 1999. 80% less likely. You might say that that's progress, right, Joe? If uh, teenagers are 80% less likely to smoke than they were in 1999, you have to ask yourself a question. Why is it that Brian King the Deputy Director of the Office on Smoking at Health at the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, is claiming in a latest survey data on teen tobacco consumption that, quote, past progress in reducing youth use of these products has been erased. Uh, what? So. If you go back to 1999, from 1999 to now, that's 20 years. In 20 years, teenagers are 80% less likely to smoke. And yet you have the CDC out there saying that all of that progress has been completely and totally erased. Uh Uh-huh. Not true. Now, of course, they're obviously lumping e-cigarettes and vaping in with that, which is dumb because you shouldn't. Vaping is not smoking. So anyway, Reason.com writes, um, that is true only if you define tobacco-free e-cigarettes as tobacco products, which the CDC does. And again, that's very unscientific. And if you ignore the enormous difference between the hazards of smoking and the hazards of vaping, which the CDC also does. The article about the 2019 National Youth Tobacco Survey published yesterday in the CDC's Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report highlight the rising popularity of e-cigarettes among teenagers. Uh, And again, I would like to point out that as e-cigarette use has grown, smoking cigarettes has declined, which is a good thing. That's exactly what you want. And eventually you want them off of the vaping devices. Uh, The share of high school students who reported using e-cigarettes in the previous month jumped from 11.7. Again, previous month. Okay, previous. They still don't do they still don't do these regular basis surveys. Uh, The share of high school students who reported using e-cigarettes in the previous month jumped from 11.7% in 2017 to 20.8% in uh, 2018. But again, I would also like to point out that is not continuous, regular use. That is simply that in the previous month, they've come in contact with it or they tried it. That is not that they vape on a regular basis or on an ongoing basis. There is still no research showing that. Uh, and it might it might very well be happening. I'm just saying that there isn't any research that shows it. It doesn't exist. Nobody's done it. All right. So, it, you know, basically it's, you know, you go back 20 years, you're 80% less likely to pick up a cigarette and smoke if you're a teenager. And the CDC is saying that all of that progress is completely erased now because of e-cigarettes, which, of course, are not smoking. Um, and they're also lumping in all of the people who are vaping, the teenagers who are vaping with nicotine-free e-liquids, too which is also misleading. Cameron, welcome to the program. Good afternoon. How you doing? Doing well. What's up? Uh, so I was sent an article today that CNN published, uh-huh. and they talked about uh, Trump being hired to rattle the cages and clean the swamp and how he was actually doing his job. Talked about how angry the Democrats are about all of this impeachment not going their way. And I had to look a couple times to make sure it was CNN that published it. Who's the author? I uh, I don't know his name. He was what he worked with either George W. Bush or his dad, one of the two Bushes. Okay, so um, they actually, they got a Republican I, contributor to actually pen an article for them that says that Trump's actually doing what he promised to do. Yeah, wow. I actually sent it to your Facebook Messenger. You did. Hold on a sec. Oh, you know what? I'm lo- logged in over there. Hold on. Let me get my phone. Okay, because I want to I want to take a look because I'll probably know who this person is, but I want to look at this because I don't know if you're aware of this, but um, hold on just a second. Is is it Cameron on Facebook as well? Yes. Did my personal personal one or my page? Uh, I believe your page. Okay, I'll look for it here probably during a a commercial. Ah, there you go. Okay, got it. Uh, all right, let's take a look at this. Donald Trump was elected to break 
the elite, of course, they want to impeach. Scott Jen Oh, Scott Jennings wrote it. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, former special assistant to President George W. Bush and a former campaign advisor to Senator Mitch McConnell. Interesting. Huh. Well, this week, I don't know if you saw that, CNN has had a uh, the lowest ratings they've had in three years. So they're oh. on a... They're on a rating slide again, and it continues to get worse. So maybe they're pumping out some more neutral content to try and stop the bleeding. Can't hurt them. No, well, you know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, if you only have one group of people watching your programming and then you put something like that out, um, then you might, you might alienate them and then nobody will watch you, I guess. That's where MSNBC just went all in. They said, yeah, we're just going to go in all in on the crazy. They even advertise it. So, yep, we're liberal, progressive. That's what we do. And at least they're being honest about it. So, yeah, that's that's where CNN's problem is. But I still I, I have great fear for poor Brian Stelter, who I know is being held hostage by a cult. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate the link, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, not all a right. problem. You take care. All you right. Too. Five seven four twenty five ninety five ninety five three. Speaking of a cult, okay. So, do you remember how we we broke down how Brian Stelter when he was trying to pretend that uh, Donald Trump was leading a cult and all of that stuff and and how silly that was? And then I pointed out that Brian Stelter and all of these other members of the media that they're out there actually they're actually behaving uh, as if they were in a cult. And it was ironic that they were running around and calling Trump and his followers a cult because um, they are behaving like a cult. So Jonathan Turley, the Democrat who testified in the judiciary uh, hearing against impeachment, he's a Democrat, remember? So, I mean, and again, if you follow politics, you know who Jonathan Turley is. He's everywhere. Um, he is a liberal Democrat. But he's not a crazy liberal Democrat. And I know some of you are like, every liberal Democrat is crazy. That's not true. They might have a difference of opinion. And this is where I've said, your neighbor is not an insane activist who wants to kill you and beat you up and things like that. The vast majority of us who have different opinions can get along just fine. Okay, Our relatives may have different opinions than us, or neighbors, or coworkers, and we don't try to slit each other's throats. But the nutsos that make it onto TV, uh, those people are the overwhelming minority, but they do exist, and you have to be aware of that. So anyway, Jonathan Turley's family is now being threatened simply because he testified at the hearing that there was no impeachable offense and that this is ridiculous and it's got to stop, okay? So now liberals, okay, in their infinite tolerance are threatening to kill him and his family. This is a lifelong liberal warrior, okay? If there were to be a convention of states, Jonathan Turley would likely end up there representing Democrats, all right? So the idea that he went off the reservation and now he's got to be threatened is exactly what happens when you are a part of a cult, which is why I thought it was so ironic that Brian Stelter was making this cult argument. Uh, was it a week ago, two weeks ago, whatever it was? Because here you have another prime example. You don't leave the cult. If you leave the cult, you've got to be attacked. You got to be attacked. You got to be smeared. You got to be assaulted. You got to be killed. All of that stuff, depending on the cult. And here he is, Jonathan Turley, one of their best champions, one of liberalism's best champions, being attacked, death threats. Why? Because he doesn't go along with the cult's dogma. Isn't that interesting? I got more open lines coming up. News Talk 953, Michiana's News Channel.